This conference will now be recorded. This conference will now be recorded. Okay, team. So, right. So, first of all, I uh, know this the main agenda of this demo, the one hour. So I'll be taking from now one hour the main object of the this particular demo. So, what the you would have joined you now when you are joining, you might be having some uh, objectives. Okay, as somebody said, they want to learn some Rex, other, you know, uh, Rex content as, as as they are developing in their proje uh, project, and some people are as part of the innovation of current trending is like based on different parameters, based on different uh, your objectives, based on your own agendas, you joined it. So whether we are meeting, either I am meeting those your objectives, your uh, the you know what why you joined those objectives, I am meeting or not. So those things uh, will be covered as part of this particular uh, demo session. This is the one point the uh, demo, and the second one is <clears throat> the second is you have to understand how I am explaining. Okay, so because you know after doing all the things after two days, if you don't satisfy, it will not make sense. That is the reason. What usually I do first, I will give a one chance to all the participants who are attending my not only the Rex. I'll be taking sessions on mainframe, you know. From TSO, JCL, COBOL, VSAM, DB2, and CSS and Rex also. So you know, I'll give one day chance to understand how I am explaining as a trainer. So whether you are able to understand whether I am a capable person, because what you what your expectations, you know, your expectations might be different, whether I am meeting or not. Okay. So first, I need to uh, present myself to everyone. If you satisfy that, then you can able to continue. So that is the main reason. At the same time, I want to, uh, you know, I want to give a clear picture what I'm going to explain as part of this training because, uh, you know, mid of the training or end of the training, you cannot say that uh, when you said that you will explain and all. So those things, all the things will be you can clarify you all your doubts, what are your, you know, if you are expecting any apart, uh, your if you are expecting any content which is not listed by me in this today's class note, you notes, you can ask me, you know. Are you covering this? You can ask, you know, whatever questions you are, uh, whatever questions are there in your mind. Okay, so this is all about uh, the, the objective and why I am conducting a free demo that is a day one demo. So, but uh, anyhow, for the people who are going to continue for them, it is a day one only. Okay, so we will be discontinuing for them, it is a free demo. For the people who are going to continue my further session, okay, the day two day and so on till end of the training. For them, it is, uh, I can say, uh, it is not a free demo. So it is a uh, day, daily, uh, so day one session. Now, so uh, first I'll talk about uh, the day one. I mean, I'll talk about the content, what we are going to discuss. So we will be starting from the scratch. Okay, so, you know, I got some introductions. Okay, so I got uh, introductions from you. Uh, saying uh, the, like there are most of the people are working in a development, some people are working on DB2 part. Just give me one minute. It's race. So I'm getting small use disturbance from, you know, login and log out from your end. Can we start it out this? Suresh, are you there? Suresh, kindly, you know, uh, because I'm getting prompt, prompt, prompt window, prompt, you know, sound. So kindly, you take care about the network. Getting the disconnected and I guess we are getting some him only the problem. I are you getting some any symbol like joining and disconnecting? Usually in offices we use Skype like when somebody comes, it will be some some a deep sound will come right. Are you getting that? Okay, right. So uh, right. So we are going to start from the scratch. Okay. If you even if you don't have prior uh, knowledge on the before, if you don't have knowledge on the Rex, it is perfectly fine. Okay, so we yeah, are because we are starting from the scratch. So we will start uh, intro to Rex. Okay, so Rex, what is Rex? Why Rex? And the features of the Rex, the basics of the Rex. We are going to discuss as part of the introduction to Rex. So I have listed even in in my mailers also, but I want to explain a little bit more in this particular demo. Okay, so that is uh, there we'll discuss about, uh, okay. Uh, introduction to Rex, then we are going to discuss uh, the Rex basics. 
okay so programmatically we are going to discuss the uh, basics or components of base components of the right okay components of right so there are five components are there I mean when you are learning uh, when you are uh, learning or when you are uh, doing a cobalt program you need some basics like you know uh, how to write a cobalt program then how do you comment it how do you comment like we have a cobalt coding sheet right 1 to 72 there is a area a there is area b there are sections okay some basic rules are there right so how to declare a variable okay so there are some basic rules in cobalt similarly for every language for every language there are some rules will be there so those rules will be covered as part of this particular rex basics those things will be covered as part of the rex basics that is all about second topic the third one is uh, we are going to discuss about the operator okay here we are going to discuss about the rex rex program execution okay we are going to discuss text program execution then how to declare a variable here it is a dynamic data typing declaring variables we are going to see declare uh, declaring variables we are going to see and uh, a statement there are different type of instructions are there so what is instructions and we are going to discuss about the keywords okay we are going to discuss about the keywords and there is something called system defined function so we are going to discuss the component called system defined function then there is a component called user defined functions okay so we have different system defined functions are there user defined functions are there there is something called stack and queue okay stack and queue also there so these are all the things will come under you know rex okay next we will discuss about the, the operator okay so we are going to discuss uh, operate we are going to discuss about the operators so we are having different type of operators in other languages how we are having here also we have different operators like automatic operators okay automatic operators uh, logical operators okay so we have a automatic operators we have a logical operators we have a relational operators and uh, we have something called concatenation operators okay so we have something else in uh, uh, rex that is some coordination operators so and other operators which are uh, there we will be discussing about all the operators then the fourth one we are going to discuss about the conditional statement that is how you write a if condition then we are going to discuss loop so we have a do loop okay do while okay there are different types of the loops are there we will be discussing that loop concept then six we are going to discuss about user uh, defined function okay so we have something called user defined function so here just what is user defined i'll be explaining it but not in detail because in the starting of the course itself i cannot uh, talk about the de user defined function so we'll be discussing again as a subject chapter about that user defined function so that we will be discussing then we will be discussing about the parsing so this is very 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 important it is very powerful keyword the parsing so parsing will is a heart of your rex i can say if you are developing any automation tool if you are developing any automation tool any small or complex you can take any automation tool you need to use somewhere you will use parsing so i can so by the by these two statements you can understand the power of parsing hi suresh uh, like we don't have any tool like you know you can try from through mobile so you try to join as a from mobile okay yeah so we are going to discuss the parsing technique okay how do you do parsing then once you are done the parsing we will be discussing about the debugging as well as okay so eventually i'll explain about the debugging so we'll discuss about the debug we have a keyword called a trace so trace is the keyword it is used to debug uh, any rex program we use the uh, in cobalt we don't we have only display even uh, you need to for that you need to compile you need to run it and you need a lot of steps you need to navigate to multiple screens or uh, you may you may have to use uh, you know you may not able to debug the line by line using the display okay so but in the rex 
we have something called trace with the help of that you can able to do interactive debugging it is not a commercial tool like we have a some expeditor ibm debugger tool right so we don't we don't, we don't need of all of them so simply you can write as a simple uh, rex keyword and you can use it then 10th topic uh, we are going to discuss something called uh, array okay so here in uh, rex terminology we call as a stem okay so that in other language generally we will call as arrays okay so we'll be discussing the arrays concept then we will start so one minute team i suresh if you are not able to uh, hear properly please you can uh, discontinue because i will share you the recorded video to you because it is a uh, difficult for me to continue like this because so many times prompt sound is coming no. Yeah, so, uh, so still I'm getting how okay. come? Uh, can you go on mute others? I can be able to see only eight users. Okay, so for today we'll manage, right? So, stem and arrays we are going to discuss then the very important topic we are going to discuss file handling in rex so uh, here i know here, from here i you know after completion of the 10th chapter you know once i complete the 10th chapter first 10 topics once we over immediately i'll be explaining few automation tools so that i'll talk about uh, you know uh, end of this particular content okay once i written the content then i'll talk about the automation tools what i'm going to cover so file handling index, so how you can uh, read the data from the PS or PDS, how do you write, okay? So how do you read and write or update, okay? So how do you create a PS file, okay? How do you create a PS file? How do you create a PDS file? So these are all the things we'll be discussing. This, you know, a lot of uh, advantages are there, you know, if you know this topic. So the 11th is uh, topic is, uh, we are going to discuss about the queue stack and the queue stack and queue we are going to discuss so these are all the chapters i can say these are all the rex basics okay these are all the rex basics then uh, as a advanced rex okay as part of this training only we'll be discussing about the macros okay so the 12th chapter is macros if you want to develop any shortcut commands okay i'll tell you you know uh, we will discuss uh, in today's uh, demo session only what type of the macros we are going to implement but to give a, a, a you know just a brief idea about the macros so we have seen save line command line right save change the command find the command okay locate command so like that if you want to develop any shortcut command for any the thing the one you are doing repetitively so the, for the lengthy work, you can automate it. Uh, you can create a Rex macro. So it's a very less number of the code. So that we will see. So twelfth topic. Then we are going to discuss some. Uh, we have a concept called environment. Okay. So host environment that will be covered before macros only. We will be discussing about the uh, different types of ISPF. Okay. IS connecting to the ISPF panel. Uh, not ISPF panel. This is uh, executing ISPF commands and all. So that we'll be seeing ISPF option. Then the fourth topic, uh, 14th topic is we are going to discuss about uh, guest DM, okay? So who are working in a uh, support, okay? So earlier in my sessions, I have not explained you the 14th which I listed. So, but uh, this batch I'm trying to explain because most of the support people are maintenance who are working in a maintenance. So you know, for them, this particular SDF option will help a lot, I can say. So how do you read the school data to generate the report? Okay, now I want to uh, capture the syslog. Let's say you have a syslog. I want to capture in hours, uh, hourly basis or monthly, you know, uh, weekly basis as per your schedule. Okay, as per your, uh, you know, scheduling, as per your schedule, you can uh, do it, you can extract it. If you want to generate the reports, you can generate. So you want to do something in the school data. So if you want to interact with the school data, I can do with the option called Yes, dear. So this there are using Rex code I can do. There is a IS uh, through IS uh, JCL utilities there. So I'll be explaining both of them for you. 
okay how to read the spool data using rex code how do you read the rex you know uh, spool data using rex utility so i'll be explaining both uh, both in part in this training then fifth topic i'm going to explain about only introduction so don't expect the depth of the introduction to ispf panel i will show you some demos how to create a ispf panel just introduction part okay how to create a ispf panel so how you can make ispf panel with the rex so far in our life we would have seen the previous or whatever one to log in what are the panels are there we have seen that only we have not created anywhere right so how you design them what are the things will be there so those things uh, just introduction will be discussing like 30 to 1 hour 30 minutes to 1 hour session will be there on uh, introduction to ispf panels okay so how to create a ispf panels which you are seeing in your you know daily basis, daily life so that we are going to discuss okay so these are all the topics we are going to discuss as part of this training so i'll pause for one minute do you have any queries please ask me So Venkat is Gaurav here. So we will see all these uh, uh, things practically also or how it is? Uh, yeah, so you are right. So everything I will be showing practically. There is no theoretical concept at all. So theory to you are all experienced person. There is no point of reaching out me for theoretical. Correct. So everything will be showing on that you know mainframe ID. So I will be showing you that as well as here. Okay. So I have you know one ID. I will be using it. I will be showing in that. Don't worry. Yeah, I hope I answered. Your okay. Topic. Yeah. Thank you. And one more thing. Um, mm -hmm. So, Go including ahead. this, uh, I mean, uh, uh, you'll be showing like uh, uh, how to create these uh, the tools. So what you were talking like, you'll be showing the two uh, automation tools how you have created. So you'll be explaining uh, like how you have created and everything in this part. Uh, good question, uh, Gaurav. See, uh, I actually I had to complete that uh, particular uh, you know answer for that. But at this moment, I'll give you answer that every program I will write in front of you. I might have faced a problem. It is 100% perfectly fine for me. I might suck while I'm uh, you know developing it. That is okay. But the thing is, every time everything I'm going to prepare in front of you, so that you'll be able to understand how to develop. The thing is. If, if I send you the code, uh, if I execute the code which is there already, so you will not able to understand how I develop it, right? So you do, you will not able to understand the background, how much efforts I did it, okay? So what I did it, how I, what is the approach, what is the flow I am taking? So those things will be covered also. So to to show to explain that only what my you know, I decided, I'll develop all the tools in front of you only on main primary. Thanks, Angad. Got it. So, any other queries, please? If no, then I'll proceed. Okay. Right. So, uh, I'll be using this part. Okay. So, so you can see there are so many tools I developed and all. So, I'll be showing to you. So, don't uh, you don't consider this all just for one batch. I would have written it, but everything I'll write it for you again freshly by creating one more videos. Don't worry about it. Okay, right. Now, so content is fine. Okay. Now we will see something about what are the tools will be covered as part of the training. So, uh, okay, so we will be covering few automation tools. Uh, I, before I explain, let me start. What is uh, Rex? Why we need Rex? What are the importance of the Rex on mainframe? So I'll go through one particular slide, which I have it. Okay. Uh, give me one minute. I am sh stopping my sharing. I hope you are able to see now. Kindly confirm me whether you are able to see or not. So today when I am using uh, PPT, from tomorrow only the main frame ID. Okay. So don't worry about it. Yeah, so uh, the thing is uh, Rex, okay. So what is Rex? Uh, Rex is a programming language. Uh, Rex stands for Restructured Extended Executor. It is developed by uh, Mike uh, Kaulsha. 
of you know from IBM when he was in IBM he developed uh, Rex. So it is introduced in 1983. So now let's let's focus on the features. What is the first one? Easy to read syntax. So I can say team uh, writing the Rex code it is very easy and in, uh, and it's not only writing even reading the Rex and analyzing the Rex program is very easy if you know the basics. So you don't need to struggle because we don't have that many lines how you write in COBOL. Like in a COBOL you have to write in thousands of the lines. But here, if you develop a complex, if you develop a complex automation to maximum 200, 300 lines. Okay, so that I can tell you. So it is easy to read and uh, the how I can say easy to read because the keywords which we use, like COBOL also we use display, accept, move, uh, add. So these verbs will give you the half of the meaning, you know, in the sentence or statement, right? Same thing even in Rex also. We have something called say, we have something called a pull, we have something called a do, we have, we have something called if. So this will give you, you know, uh, this will give you a clear picture to you before you are learning. So that is the one I can say. So it is a free format. So if I want to talk about the free format, the statement, the feature, if you take a COBOL or JSTL in mainframe, okay, in mainframe we have a JSTL, we have something called COBOL. Whenever you are writing a COBOL or JSTL, we have some rules. If you take a JSTL, like JSTL statement should start with the identifier, like slash slash, then it should be name field, then operation field, operand, and parameters. And we, and uh, we, each parameter should be separated by comma. And there you should not give a blank, is uppercase or lowercase. There are so many rules are there while you're writing a JSTL. That is coming when I'm talking about the JSTL. Let's come back to the COBOL part. Now in a COBOL, we have something called divisions. There is a standard approach, is hierarchical programming language. And we have something called area A, area B, and comment, okay. So these are all the things are there in COBOL. So those things are not there in Rex. This why I am comparing with the COBOL and JSTL since you are already having a knowledge. So I can able to give clear picture to you. So free format is nothing but you can start your rec statement from wherever you want. There is no risk restriction that you know we have to start from first column, you have to start from second column or third column or fourth column. You can start from any column. Okay. So this is the one convenient built-in function. So uh, we, uh, according to my experience, we use very, uh, you know, we use uh, limited, limited, limitedly we use uh, COBOL functions in our our application programs. Okay, but in real uh, in Rex, we use predominantly we use uh, Rex functions. By that only we can reduce the number of lines. Okay, so because so many so many functions are there, so those you know the, those functions will uh, help you to reduce the number of the lines lines which you are supposed to write. So the, uh, no, that I can tell you. Next, debugging capabilities. So I, I was telling you, right? So if you want to, this is the one I'm talking about, debugging. So this is very important because in your, uh, when you write a complex automation tool, you will not be able to understand sometimes what is going, where it is going wrong. So you can able to debug interactively by, you know, line by line, and you can pause a line during debugging and if you want to see the first line out, uh, first line, uh, first line statement output uh, in the middle of the debugging. So you want to debug interactively, you can debug it. There are different options are there. So that is the reason we can, uh, that, that is the reason they mentioned, uh, you know, debugging is a feature of the Rex. No case, in, I guess I no need to stress on this part. So you can write in uppercase, you can write the variable, let's say variable name or function name. You can write in uppercase or lower case, however you want. Data wise, up to you how you want how you want to take the data. You want to take as it is case sense to you want to uh, simply you need to convert into the uppercase. So that is depends on your code, it will be there. So the no no uh, no case sense to is all about the variable, function name, and all they are talking about this part. And keyword. So if you write a something called say. You can write is a mixed case, you can write uppercase or both of this. So you can do extensive mathematical uh, capabilities, okay? So you can do any large uh, calculation also with the help of Rex. So highly uh, versatile programming language. So these are all the features of 
right. Okay, these are all the features of the right. And I can add some more points. Uh, one more uh, uh, feature I can say it is a dynamic uh, programming language. It is a dynamic data typing programming language. So, what is the meaning of dynamic data typing programming language? If you take uh, any any high level programming language, we need to declare a variable. While you are declaring a variable, you need to declare the data type of the variable and size of the variable. Let's take in a COBOL. We write 77 WS uh, average amount pick 9 of 9, 9 of 9, uh, 9, 9, like that, right? So those things are not required. Okay, so those things are not required. You can use directly the variable, uh, whatever you want to store. And based on the data, now Venkat, you are saying very, you know, it is a dynamic data typing. Then how you can make sure what is the data type of that variable? Yes. Okay. So what type of the data you store? Here we have a two data types. Okay. One is numeric data and character data. Character means it's alphanumeric. So if you store few digits, that will become a numeric data type. If you store character or special character, it will become a alphanumeric. So based on your data, your variable data type will decide. Okay. Whatever data you are accommodating, based on that, it will decide. So this is the one point I want to tell you. There is another point, okay. So in COBOL or in any other language, let's say I stored a equal 10, okay. Which means that uh, A is a variable always should store only numeric data. If you want to overwrite, you can override with the number. But now I can store something called India, something. I can store character data now. So what is, if I say, say A, the output will be, output will be here India. So you don't need to stick with the numeric data always, okay? Whatever data you want to overwrite, you can overwrite it. So that is one, uh, you know, the feature of the uh, right. Okay, so these are all the features of Rex. Now let's see, uh, we have seen features of the Rex. So I hope you would have got some idea. Now let me focus why we need Rex on mainframe. So that might be the big uh, and first question who are attending the Rex to, who are, you know, uh, attending or who are learning about the Rex. So why we need, why main, why Rex? Okay, how Rex will help you on mainframe? With the help of Rex, you can create automation tools how you want okay so how many automation tools you want to create you can able to develop with the help of rex on mainframe so we don't have as you know that on mainframe we have a less scope to uh, develop on any automation with some external languages right so we have only I, according to my knowledge we have something called rex c list okay either one of them you can use to develop some automation tools so here we will be covering a uh, rex only not c list okay so what, uh, uh, no, why we Rex? So you, I have answered already. So to create some automation tools, we use Rex. We use the Rex on mainframe. So why we need to create an automation tool? That might be the next question. So as you know that in our daily life, okay, so in our uh, team or in our project, we might be doing the same task again and again, repetitively, and uh, we are, it might be taking the same task time thinking process to overcome those problems see sometimes i want to take a backup of the school after you know every six hours okay so uh taking you know implementing this might be difficult manually right so every after three hours going there and taking the backup might be difficult so what i can do i can create a one automation tool for that so i can put that particular execution in a scheduler tool your scheduler will tool will take care about the uh, taking a backup so this is the one example, uh, you know, I can tell you how the Rex will, will help you. It's not only taking the backup, okay. So let's say team, and uh, now you are in a development team, you are in a development team, you got a one new project so where you are creating multiple programs for your client. So end, uh, end of the deliverables, okay, when you are delivering the all the deliverables, so clients might ask you, what are the COBOL coding standards which you followed according to my input? Now you are in a position to answer. Your management in a position to answer, saying that we followed the standards and all. How do you say? How can you say? Okay, so I can say that our programs are followed the standards only when I review them. Okay, so how how much accuracy accurately you can give that the review 100% is done properly? Okay, so very doubtful, right? And reviewing 
COBOL coding standard in all the programs, it might be very difficult. So today I'm very good. I'm very, you know, I don't have any, you know, I don't have any work. Then I can review as a manager and neatly one by one the entire code. But tomorrow I might be having some work and I has at the same time I have to review it. So what happened? So some of them uh, components I might miss while I'm reviewing it, right? So those things will happen when you're doing you know, manually. So those things you can work on it by creating a automation or uh, tools by creating a automation tools that is called COBOL coding standard tool. Okay, so there is a one more thing uh, which we do in our daily life. Every day you people might be opening a JCL. Okay, so what uh, what usually we do? So we might be submitting the code and all right. So let me so let me open some JCL. Okay, so I want to show you now. So now I hope I'm uh, I'm doing something over here. Team. So hi JCL. Now I'm doing something. Uh, when I'm analyzing the JCL, I want to check this particular data set is there or not. What usually we do? So what usually we do? We will copy this data set name and start. We'll navigate to another screen, paste it, and type. Okay, it is there. No, it is not there. Okay. So this is something what we did it. If the data is, is there, okay, it is a PS or PDS, we need to check it. So when you are analyzing a data set, you need to open a data set from that JCL without navigating to another screen. If I want to do it, I can do with the help of Rex. Okay, so again, I'm repeating about this Rex tool. So when we are analyzing a JCL, all of a sudden we want to see the what is there in the what is the content is there that particular data set okay so again you know as i told you we need to copy it and paste it and opening edit or browse mode whichever mode we want so typing a line command moving the cursor you know very lengthy process time taking process so we can develop some automation tool and uh, we can you know we can reduce uh, the length of the time and you know without navigating the multiple screens so this is also one thing you can do with the automation tool. Like that, you can do n number of things, okay? You can do n number of things. Maximum, most of the things, whatever it is coming to your mind, you can able to implement it. There is no, there is no point and there is no concept of impossible. So I can say 80%, whatever the idea is coming into your mind, 80% you are able to do it. But the thing is, what we need to, in order to implement our idea practically, so what are the components we required? So we need to know about them, okay? If you know about all of them, then you can able to develop a, a tool. So until, unless if you don't know anything, you cannot be able to develop it. So getting my point set team. Okay, so this is the automation tool which you uh, develop it. So like that, as I said, you, you, know, you can develop as, as many you want. So this is all about you, what you can do with the, uh, Rex and mainframe. So let me list out the tools what I'm going to explain as part of the training. So I'm going to explain, okay, so either COBOL coding standard tool, COBOL coding standard tool. So I'm going to explain COBOL coding standard tool. The second one, I'm going to explain the tool called how many, okay, so just it will give you an idea how I am developing the tool. It might be deep, easy only, okay, for you it may not be how looks. How Rex tools looks like, you know, our team. When you are developing, it seems for you, for your team, it is required. If you tell the same requirement for others, it may not be suitable because for them, they might be doing other things. You might be diff doing different things. That is the beauty of the Rex. Okay, so the tool which is developed by you, the same tool may not be required by, for, for other teams or by other projects. So, are you are when you are talking to your mainframe uh, friends outside? So that is very important. You need to uh, figure out what automation tools required for your team or your project. So you need to concentrate that part. So now let's come back to here. So now I want to get it, how many steps are there in a JCL? Okay, I will give a JCL as an input, the member name and PDS name. It should give me the, it should give me the uh, steps. So once I done with this, once I done with this, you will be getting assignment immediately from my end. 
to take assignment now itself the assignment is something you need to uh, try you need to uh, count you need to count the number of files number of files used in the given jcl let's say if you see my jcl now how many data sets are there yeah dsl or x uh yeah dsn all okay so if you see one two there are three characters okay so there are three times dsn is there right so which means that approximately i can say three data sets are there now i want to print the count so the thing is uh, as i told you right uh, might be not usable but implementing that also very challenging right so how do you get it so how many ways you can get it lot of things you will learn while you are developing the automation tool okay so this is the second point so third one okay so third one i am going to explain opening a data set opening uh, opening a data set from the jcl without navigating any screen okay you don't navigate anything automatically your tool will take care about it so that can be the opening a data set again your choice you want to open in it again browse mode on or view mode you want to delete it yes so you can do any operation among them okay so this is the one the next one the next tool i am going to explain about uh i want to ask you a question before i proceed but i guess you have something called se sb sd37 right what is space append error any idea about space append error yes when sir yes sir space events if the uh, space provided for the data set is not enough the job is done okay so what is your solution for that guys other please respond what is the solution for that uh, can increase the space for that particular parameter from uh, how you how you increase is it possible to increase once to create that is an next uh, question right no then <laughs> other can i have the solution I mean you would have also faced it right there are some people are you know i guess they are working on mainframe so you are having some idea right kindly make it interactive so i asked you only first question to you right kindly okay so yes i know as our colleague said that okay so we need to increase the space the solution is only the space okay so now increasing as a you know when i said that increasing again it is a process is there okay so i can give you the solution for the space event without any risk tool okay first let's say i have a file called x.y.z i am getting an space event error for this so my ultimate target now i want to increase the space it might be the primary or secondary quantity okay so to do that what usually manually what we have to do we need to create a data set called some another dummy data set or one data set as per the new space requirement okay so i create it once i created as per the new requirement then i will uh, copy or i will do a move i'll do copy the data whatever it is there from x dot y dot z to a dot b dot c we do this once the copy is done i will delete x dot y dot z then rename from a dot b dot c to x dot y dot z so again we come we came back to the our original data set name because that might be in the production something else also right so we should take care about you know that thing also so doing these steps while you are doing this many steps you might delete without copying also there are human errors can occur right so if something goes wrong then you do you know your production data or your you know whatever you are doing in either development or whatever you are doing in support it might impact it okay so you know this many lines this many steps you have to do it so it is very lengthy part i can say it is not a complex okay so i can say this is not a complex what i said you here all are easy straight in a straight forward but the thing is there are human errors can occur so to overcome them 
okay so to overcome them to overcome the error so i can create a rex tool which will ask you the rex tool will ask you what is the your uh, for which data set okay i can say the title of the space space uh, space error is okay space event resolver tool resolve resolver tool okay so something like this now what i do so i last from the user for which data set he wants to or she wants to increase the size file size then give the what is the latest quality quantity second quantity that's all i will ask from the user only pro, you know i'll ask i'll throw a one more screen to the user saying that what is your new what for which data set you want to increase one primary quantity secondary quantity that's all i'll ask from the user within a fraction of second i will tell to the user saying that the space is increased message increase please go and check as per your requirement is there or not something like that notification as as acknowledgement for his requirement okay so this is the something we are going to do with that as part of this training then um so uh, the fifth one i am going to explain uh, that is sdf okay that is pool how do you read the pool data through rex code and uh, okay so that is rex1 and jcf okay so these are all the things i am promising uh, i can say i am promising it so very important again cobol coding standard will take minimum 5 days but i don't explain in depth about it i will give you one idea like declaring a variable sir start level number should start from here something they will take a three four rules then i'll create it okay because it is not a this is small tool to develop because in cobol there are so many standards are there okay like all linkage section variables should start with the ls all working storage variables should start with the ws okay so like this like this so many will be there right so we will not be discussing but i will you know uh, the five once i develop these five tools once we done with the above content you are in a position i can say strongly that you are in a position to develop the automation tool okay that i can tell you but okay so in any language either anybody wants anybody will teach either myself or somebody until unless if you implement until unless if you do any hands on part you will not be able to develop it okay so this is all about uh, the tools what i am going to explain as part of this training so any queries team here can i proceed i'm clear sir okay okay is it possible uh, to you know uh, check the volume update uh, so uh, volume how much volume is occupied uh, using rex yeah yeah you can do it see you are you are having a data set for that what is the primary quantity it is utilized right that is your saying right you are asking right yes i guess uh, gos volumes yeah i guess you can do it okay okay so we have something called okay we have something called list dsa okay so how i am getting how i am giving the solution for the space event so with the help of the those concepts only you can able to see the data set attributes it information what is the primary quantity it is allocated how much it is utilized okay so you can refer the list dsa list dsa function so this is a system defined function with the help of that we can able to retrieve about our data set information so this is all about okay so right now so i explained you the content part and uh, you know the sdr so the next one is okay so how many days it will take to complete the training on that so as i am telling you again i will be giving some assignments for topic if you are free if you are available when i give the assignment you are good to develop so that is up to you if you can develop on uh, your client or on, on the system where you are working because you don't need to submit the jcl just you will be executing your exploit it will not take uh, your cpu resources and all and simply you write a code and you can execute it you know uh, that way you can do it if you want to do any answer so that is the one thing i want to tell right 
so to complete uh, the whole training i can say you know 6 12 13 to 15 hours minimum so minimum 13 hours are required 15 or more than also i can take it so 15 to 40 uh, 13 to 15 hours so every day one hour every day one hour session will be there okay and and uh, we do will not be having session on weekend okay so monday to friday if you know if everybody wants to complete the training uh, uh, as soon as possible without uh, any delay so i am ready to take one hour 15 minutes to one hour 30 minutes per day so i am fine perfectly fine with that also okay so anyhow after once i complete the demo so i'll take your uh, you know interest and all i'll get all the details from you then we will proceed further so this is about the number of days training now the next there are few frequently asked questions from the participants okay so uh when that, uh, we were working in a uh, you know, company we might due to some personal reasons or due to some other reasons we could not able to attend one or two days or three days session okay it is perfectly fine even if you're not able to attend one or two days okay so every day whatever i am conducting the session i'll be recording them i'll be sending the days i'll sending the videos for the days only which you miss it i don't send all the days videos i don't send all the all the days videos i'll be sending for the days which you missed it let's say some x person is missed on third day fourth day on sixth day and eighth day and the ninth day so you will be getting the videos for those four six six and eight ninth day okay so this is the one you can so this is the one is there in my training feature and okay so this is the one feature of my training the second feature is something uh once you uh okay once you complete the training in future if you want to attend my training you're perfectly fine to attend it okay so you can attend as many times you want once you attend my training so that is also one feature of my training this is all about you know uh, content the, the content and the, the tools what we are going to discuss the duration and uh, monday to friday will be will be discussing so any other query